Fosbol Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Good evening, everyone. This is Crossbow Vanguard. I'm Dempster, and I'll be your host for today. Crossbow Radio Wave is a radio show dedicated to bringing you anything and everything Crossbow Vanguard and Card Fight Vanguard, including updates, announcements, and so on. Keep in mind that Crossbone Radio Wave is not an official radio show and is entirely inspired by Hibiki Radios, Radio Vanga G, and Radio Vanga G Next. So, wow, it's already near the end of February and in a week's time it's gonna be March. And、uh, as you all know, March is a very interesting month for a few of us because,、um, well, the Rami Labyrinth booster is gonna come out very soon. But not only that,、um, just this week, well, a few days ago actually, Uh, we heard news about the new, new,、uh, new season for Yu Gi Oh! I know it's a Venga channel, but let's just talk about Yu Gi Oh! for this week.、Um, and the season is called Yu Gi Oh! Vrains. 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 <laughs> I don't know how to spell it, but it's train or brain without, uh, uh, with a V instead. So it's Vrains? I don't know. But anyway,、um, the main character's name is、uh, Fujiki Yusaku, and his main ace. I almost said Vanguard. <laughs> Anyway, his main ace、uh, is d e c o d e Talker, and well, along with him came a very a, a completely new mechanic called Link Summoning. So, d e c o d e Talker is a, is a Link Monster himself. So, Link Monster,、uh, well, as far as I know,、uh, it's, it, it's a new mechanic.、Um, Link Summoning well, basically means that you gotta, you gotta tribute to, you know, To satisfy the conditions for the Link Monster. Let's say, for example, because Deco Talker himself is a Link 3 monster, and、um, his, I think one of his,、uh, well, uh, okay, maybe, maybe not Deco Talker, I'm not very familiar with it, but I remember there was one called、um, Gaia Saber, the Video Knight, because it's more vanilla, I guess. Anyway,、um, he's, he's a Link 2 monster, I think? No, Link 3 monster. And his condition to summon,、uh, to Link Summon, is two or more monsters. So,、um, On the field, you gotta have like say three monsters on the field, and then you tribute them and you do a Link Summon. Link Summon will be on a new,、uh, on a new zone called the Link Monster,、uh, Extra Monster Zone. So, Extra Monster Zone is where you know, all the monsters from the extra deck summoned will go to. So, bef- if you do not have a Link Monster in your possession,、um, whatever they summon for your special, for your extra deck, like say be it through.、Um, Be it through fusion summon or synchro summon or exceed summon for that matter, will all go to the link,、uh, to, sorry, to the extra monster zone. So, the extra monster zone, there are two of it right now, and it's in between you and your opponent's、um, monster, zo- monster field zone. So, it, think of it like、um, the Guardian Circle in Vanguard, in the middle,、uh, and Both players share you know, both the, the, the extra monster zones until, until the player first summons、um, something onto that zone. And、um, right now, the monster placement is a lot more important because of the link monster. They have、uh, a total of 8 arrows, and depending on the, num- the link number that they have,、uh, the link markers will light up accordingly. Say, think of it like, say,、um, if, you play, if you play Valiant Force, like if you're in Singapore and you play Valiant Force,、um, think of it like、uh, a link aura. So, The placement of your heroes、um, determine what kind of bonuses who will get. Say, for example,、um, Thea Alexander, she's a healer. So her link aura is whenever,、uh, whenever she attacks,、um, she'll heal whoever's in the link aura. So something like that for Yu Gi Oh! as well.、Um, except that, you know,、um, this. Except that,、uh, <laughs> how should I say this? The,、um, the, link mo- the link zones, which is the zones that the link monster is connected to、um, via the, the, the link marker, the arrow,、um, only, you can only, su- you, you,、uh, only then you can, spe-、uh, you can special summon like, monsters from the extra zone,、uh, extra, extra deck. To those areas. So, this changes the game a lot because there are certain decks that rely heavily on fusion. Say, for example,、um, the Elemental Heroes is one of them. Another one will be the Fright Fur or the Death Toy series, you know, depending on where you're from. So, these two,、um, m- these two main decks will have a lot of. Uh, uh, you really have to think carefully on how to play them now because、uh, of, that, of that kind of ruling now. I'm not exactly too sure when it's up, but let me know if it is because I'm currently not looking at it right now. But,、um, This will change a lot, and、uh, you, need to, you need to put in one more step、uh, in order to summon、uh, so called as per normal. So, this will change the game a lot. And for myself,、uh, it, it's not so much of a big deal because I'm a Magna player,、uh, Magna player, <laughs> Magna Warrior player myself.、Uh, and、uh, the only fusion summon, the only, the only monsters I have in my extra deck are the three、um, Imperial Magnums, which is the fusion monster for Berserkian and Valkyrian. So, other than that, there really isn't much for me,、uh, except that, you know, I guess I may have to play a Link Monster. I don't know. It really changes the game. I have to really think about it, as well as the monster placement, because now, now, so now you can, you really need to 
decide on which um, which zone that you need to summon on. By the way, that, that's all for I think that's about all I can say for Yu-Gi-Oh um, Vrains. Vrains. Anyway, uh, yep. So let's move on. Let's let's come back to Vanguard and the radio show itself. So without further ado, <laughs> sorry. Without further ado, let's begin. Stand up, Vanguard. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in card fight Vanguard. This program is brought to you by Crossbone Vanguard. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in card fight Vanguard. Good evening once again, this is Dempster. So let's begin with talking about the most recent episode of the anime Cut 5 Vengaji next. Turn 20, Unyielding Pirate, or in Japanese, Fukutsu no Kaizoku Ki. So it's the third day of Under 20, and uh, this week basically it just focuses on Rami Labyrinth and a bit of Saya. Uh, for all you guys who love the Mew Jellyfish girl, I call her Jellyfish because of her hair, she really looks like that. But anyway, um, this week is focused basically on mainly on these three idols. So, uh, but today specifically the highlight or the highlight or rather the, the, the fight that we're focusing on is the fight between Chono Amu and Hayao Andi. So, as we all know, Anri is a fan of Amu, and <laughs> I mean, if, if I were him, I would probably feel the same way too if I see Mimorin playing Vanguard, and i will be like, you know, a fight, Boku fight to stick to you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, well, the fight, you know, as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, night, it's, it's a new Night Rose against uh, Vanquisher, and a new Night Rose is very interesting, sorry for that, that thing. But anyway, uh, the new Night Rose is very interesting because she allows you to do one more thing, which is... Um, when when your G unit strikes for one, uh, she allows you to put up to top three cards of your deck, uh, mill the top three up to that means you can choose not to mill and call a, a unit from your drop zone. So it's a step up of her original Night Rose uh, effect. So if you ask me, there really isn't much of a difference because and and. and uh, not much of a difference because of the main mechanic that it plays with, but at the same time, it's also very, uh, it's very different from the other secondary ace vanguards like Asha or Altima because Altima focuses mainly on the brave unit, uh, on brave units and he, whatever he calls, um, that unit gets plus four k. And then for Asha's case, um, color plus one, so plus one, you you superior call a unit of the same copy, and then you well that unit gains boost and no no power plus. But for night for the new night rose, uh, which is vampire princess of starlight or something like that, night rose. But anyway, um, her new skill, uh, not only that, uh, not only you know you get to mill up to top three of your deck and superior call one unit from your drop zone, but also if that called unit has has hollow ability, then it gets plus three k as well. So it's really a huge step up to what um the night rose already can do. The hollow um, the holo mechanic and uh, not only that the, the fight itself I mean it, it's a very interesting fight but uh, there are a lot of weird um, weird things as in f oh, well as far as I'm concerned looking at ha looking at Hayao um, well <laughs> first striding to VMAX really bro <laughs> uh, well I, I can ask I can ask um, my fellow Narukami players which is Leon actually I can ask him about his opinions on that and I think I, I can tell you for sure that he'll be screaming internally and externally at the same time like why would you strike to VMAX first uh, was it VMAX no Voltage and then after the VMAX so, so it's like huh you know <laughs> But well, let me know if let me know in in the comments or in uh, emails if you uh if you actually know why uh why they made him do this and well is there any is there any legit reasoning behind him doing that? But other than that, there are also a few errors on and in terms of animation for this week's episode where like you know, because I remember very specifically uh Hayao Hayao specifically called out um Jaggy Shot Dragoon, and for some reason when he attacked with Chatura that. That Dra Jackie Shot Dragoon is gone. So wh what's up with that? What's up with that? You know, not only that. Uh, not not just Hayao, Amu him Amu herself is also guilty of that same animation error because when she called Negro lazy, she called it as rest, I think, and it was so weird. <laughs> Maybe it's a it's a perspective switch. So I may you know I may be wrong on that, but well, let me know again if I'm wrong. So, <laughs> uh, but I kind of like the new Night Rose. I mean the. Well, uh, albeit the, the animation quality for this week is a bit off and uh, on and off, but I think overall it's an okay episode. It it, it ended off in a very good note, and that's a very good thing. And uh, well, Amu's resolve with Shion is, I think, it, it comes around full circle and is complete. Well, um, 
uh, as we all know, uh, the 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 Kiba Corporation backed backed uh, her, her up with in terms of the hospital treatment for her parents uh, financially, uh, and well, she's very grateful for that. And I think you know that that just just that short scene of her looking at Xion and Xion and she's smiling back, at, smiling at Xion and Xion smiling back. I think that's a very it, although they didn't say anything, but I I feel that you know, let the past be the past. Uh, I might have you know you might have done something wrong to me, but. You know what? It's okay. Um, we were all we were all misunderstood people. So I'm gonna help you, and uh, you know, in return, I hope you can you know continue loving Vanguard and continue playing Vanguard. So it's a very nice resolve I see there, and a very nice conclusion to the the two ties the ties between them. So <laughs> uh, and one more thing, uh, one more thing is which, which is that um, at the end of the episode, uh, Amu and Luna gave the the Rami Rami Labyrinth keychain out to you know whoever they meet whoever they fight with and I think that's a very cute gesture uh, I, I honestly don't know where they keep all the pouches because looking at their, their dresses their, their costume it's very hard to tell where the pocket is <laughs> unless you're taught you're telling me that the place shall not be named okay anyway I can't I don't could it I can't do that categories thing but anyway uh, unless you're telling me that there's a certain hidden area or uh, in that costume that you can keep things infinitely like a hammer space I'm not gonna buy that <laughs> But in any case, that that charm that charm slash keychain thing is actually it's actually it's actually a strap. But anyway, it's actually pretty cute, and I really want that. And looking at how different it is animated along with the rest of the animation itself, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna release it um one of these days. And let me tell you, I am getting one of it. <laughs> it's so cute. And well, who knows? Maybe I can get I can get it signed one of these days. Nah, just just kidding. I don't think they'll do that. But why not, right? I mean, that's uh, cute. It's really really cute and I like it. It's literally the chibi Amu and Chimi Luna and it's just like ah super cute. Anyway. <laughs> right, so next we have fan mail. Hooray! <laughs> so this one is sent to us by Mag Masmo channel again. So as always, thank you very much for the mail. Hi Damster, hello. I'd love to see, or should I say here, <laughs> how this how 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 much love this show gets and I feel really involved in it. So keep on going. Thank you very much. Uh, a thing I really wanted to ask is what is your po opinion about sub clans? For example, like Shadow Paladins, Witches, um, Beast Deities, or Machining that doesn't get as much love and support. It's because is because sub clan is it because sub clans are bad or are there some other reasons? What do you do you think the sub clans should be played more? Uh, thanks for answering and stand up, Vanguard. <laughs> Thank you very much, stand up, Vanguard indeed. <laughs> well, um, sub clans. Well, I I really can't say much on my own because uh, when I when I first joined when I first started playing Vanguard, it was at um, the Legion make art, so Legion was a huge thing, and back then, uh, my first deck was the Aqua Force deck. It was a Blue Storm Legion, which is mainly focused around Tetra Burst Dragon. So there really isn't much to say about just you know just Legion. That I, most of the cards I play are Legion support, so that's not really a sub clan. But the sub clan I was playing was Blue Storm, and I think that was okay, I guess. But sub clans, well, I mean, as as I as I progress on and on, you know, I start to get more, I start to get build more decks, and um, well. Unknow unknowingly, I guess <laughs> some of these decks uh, are very heavily focused on subclans. But um, if you ask me, uh, I think subclans are a very interesting thing because, um, uh, with the game as it is right now, uh, okay, let let's just let's just take a step back a bit. When when the G era first came out, everything was pretty much um, generic in a sense. So if you were to build a deck entirely out of you know just the new sets the newer sets, uh, you can do a lot of different things, like say, um, one card is not restricted to another, and uh, I think name namesake wise, it really isn't so much, but I think because of that, they felt, you know, they have the need to res well, to introduce keywords and all, so when it, when these keywords start coming in, uh, it sort of became a sub -clan on its own already, so there are a lot of things that you cannot put in, and there are a lot of things you cannot, um, that you cannot not put in, like say for example, my Oracle deck, my Susano deck, uh, it's heavily based around the Oracle's um, name, the 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 keyword. So a lot of things I cannot not put in because it, it really it really needs to synergize one another on that. So if you ask me on beast deities or machining, I think it's all right. Uh, one thing it, it kind of restricts a lot on like what cards can be used and all because of say a special kind of blast or spe a special soul blast or this kind of things. Uh, and you know requiring your Vanguard to have a certain name before you can you can do stuff. But I think it's okay back then because it's not so much of a it wasn't so much of a deal because most of these uh these cards are like you know either twelve k attackers, ten k attackers or things like that. And uh, well, if you if you play a liberated deck, you know. 
you have a you have a wide range of cards to use. Um, but of course, you know most people you will go with the staples and things like that. But um, don't let don't let the sub clan uh, restrict you to to building just the sub clan itself. I mean, it's a good base. But if you feel that there are certain cards which are generic that can help your deck in uh, way better than than some of the sub clan specific cards, I say you know just go for it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling and all. But uh, right now, right now as it is, if you ask me whether sub clan should be played more, right now. Um, it is being played more. <laughs> if you want to consider um, keywords as subclans, but if not, then yeah, we should play more. Um, they're still they're still giving uh, they're still giving some of these subclan specific boosts, like say, and, and trying to make certain um, certain subclan a thing. Like for example, the current um, the current boost for which is no the, the upcoming boost, which is the Rami Labyrinth in the in the moonlight. I think. Wait, give me a moment. Uh, Rami Labyrinth in the moonlight. Uh, yeah, under the moonlight. Sorry. So yeah, uh, Rami Labyrinth under the moonlight. It gives you. It, it makes. It's trying to make uh, ghosty a thing right now, and I think that's very interesting because hey, one more deck for me to build, and one more interesting you know mechanic for me to find out, and I think that's very interesting as well. Um, other than interesting, there really isn't much I can say. So, <laughs> so okay. I I think I hope I answer your questions, and if I don't, uh, do let me know what I missed out, and hopefully I can I can cover more in the next part. So thank you very much once again, Mac Masmo Channel, for sending uh the the fan mail, and for the rest of you who are listening, um, do keep those mails coming because we really love to read them. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Next up is... What's that card? This is the section where I'll pick a random card from a random clan and describe it in the most cryptic way possible and you guys are going to guess what card I am describing. I will announce the answer at the end of the show so listen on if you want to know if you're correct. But just to let you know, if you get it correct, you will not get anything and if you get it wrong, you will not lose anything. So don't worry, it's all in the name of fun and let... No, I think the main, point, the main point of this is just to hear how badly I described the card. So anyway, <laughs> this week um, we have a card from Nova Grappler and uh, well, let's just take a look at this card right now it's a great tool I've been I've, I realize I've been describing a lot of great tools lately uh, <laughs> uh, so the staple it's got the intercept ability it's got you know, it's a 5,000 shield base power 9,000 one critical and it's an alien this might give it away but it's an alien <laughs> so it's got one skill and that one skill can be used anywhere on the field so just so you know well, except for the guardian circle I guess what Hey. <laughs> All right. So the design wise for this one, um, well, uh, how should I say this? So the the whole card itself is mainly orange, and um, this unit's got blonde hair, and it's wearing is wearing something like Kara Zim, I guess. <laughs> so if you if you if you play Warcraft or Heroes of the Storm or whatsoever, oh no, is it Diablo? Wait, let me think. Is Kara Zim for Diablo? Oh no, Cap, help me. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, uh, if you know Kar the character Karazim, yep, then this unit dresses in a sort of a similar fashion to him. And, uh, well, let's just see. Um, overall, he's, he's red, I guess. He's, he's got red armaments around him, and he literally looks like a monk to me. So, uh, I think that's about all I can give you before I give too much away. <laughs> so, if you know the answer, keep it to yourself. If you want to, if you want to say it out, uh, that's fine too. But don't spoil the others who are trying to guess the card. And stay tuned to the end of the show to find out whether you're correct or not. Crossbow Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Storaidoza Seiyu! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, why am I so excited? Because this is a new, uh, new section where I recite lines from uh, any form of media as close to the original as possible and well, that's about it. Uh, just to let everyone know, I have a dream of becoming a voice actor in Japan one day, so take this as my way of uh, having fun and practicing at the same time. So, um, because since today is the first uh, the first day I do this segment, uh, I'll just pick out a few lines from the, the anime, uh, from the Vanguard anime, and I'll try my absolute worst at reciting them. Uh, and, and this is probably the only section you hear me go f almost full Japanese, so yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so this first line is from the first, or rather the second episode, I think, um, of the first season of Vanguard. And it is, it is said by Kai Toshiki. You, know, you guys remember him? 
I certainly do. So, <laughs> so he says this line when he rides to Dragonite with a lot, and it goes a little something like this. Mirugai, kore ga ore no honto no sugata da. Ride the vanguard. Kore yo no subete no mono o yakitsukus. Mokishiroku no horo. Dragonic Overload. Okay, that was <laughs> that was all right, I guess. Uh, except maybe the ending. The ending's a bit weird. But anyway, <laughs> oh, give me a on, on a scale of one to ten, how close do you think I am to Kai? <laughs> but I can I can tell you for sure that's all. That's basically all I can do for Kai. Maybe a few other weird ones, but um, in the future, in the future. So anyway, this next line comes from well, it's it's a bit more recent. Uh, it's from Vengaji and Vengaji Nix, I guess. And this is said by <laughs> one of the guys I call a retard in my, you know what, grants by Rika's video. But anyway, uh, his this this line is said by Tsuneto, uh, when he every time he every time he appears in front of Chrono, he will always say this. So this is what he says. Oretachi <clears throat> Trinity Dragon. <laughs> I feel very controlled for some reason. I can't I can't like let it all out, but maybe it's just you know the type itself. But anyway. <laughs> All right, I have one more. I've got one more from this, uh, from Vanguard, and this is from Myojin Ryuzu, right before he dies. <laughs> this is the first time I'm doing old man voice, so forgive me if I if I can't really do it well, but I'm just gonna do my best. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> For though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. Okay, I should just stick to Ikemen voices. I can't do old man for nuts. <laughs> but I think this is more funny than serious. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, let me know how close I am to any of these characters. <laughs> okay, so that's about it for this week's Strike to see you. Uh, if you have any lines you want me to read out and you want voice, feel free to send them to us. It doesn't have to be the original character saying it. It can be from any, you know, any kind of setting, any kind of voice you want me to do. And any kind of line you want me to say, uh, just just feel free to throw all sorts of crazy ideas to me, and I'll do my best to fulfill that. Well, to 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 um to <laughs> fulfill that requirement, I guess, and to complete that mission of becoming a better voice actor. So that's all for this week's stride. Sorry, Storidos I'll see you. Crossbone Radio Wave. Bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Card trivia of the day. This is a section where we pick a certain card and talk about it in as many details as possible, such as the skill it has, the artwork, its use in the deck, and of course, random trivia about the unit. If you have any picks on what card you would like us to talk about, feel free to drop a comment on our social medias or send us an email, all of which will be mentioned at the end of the show. So we're back in the United Century again. Yes, I I don't get it why I don't know why and but you know we we are at the clan of Shadow Paladin because this week I'm going to talk about the Dark Dictator. Wow. <laughs> okay. So the Dark Dictator is a Grade 3 Shadow Paladin unit with a 10k base power uh, that's only available in Japanese as a promo card in the Card 5 Vanguard Manga Volume 4 and in English as a box topper for BTO4, Eclipse of the Illusionary, Sh uh, Illusionary Shadow. It's got three skills. The first skill is a continuous skill on the Vanguard Circle where your units cannot boost this unit. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Okay, the second skill is also a continuous skill on the Vanguard Circle, which is during your turn, this unit gets plus 2k for every uh, for each of your Shadow Paladin rearguards. Okay, again, sounds very familiar, right? And the last one is an auto skill, which is when this unit is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you may sow blast 3. If you do, choose up to two of your Shadow Paladin rearguards in your front row, and those units get plus 5k until the end of turn. Okay, that's a bit different from what I had in mind. Uh, and if you, guys, if you guys thought the same too, it's because some of the skills are the same as the King of Knights Alfred. And there's a pretty good explanation for that. But before I before I jump into that, um, just want to point it out that the, the last auto skill is kind of a watered down version of Soul Saver Dragon skill. Which is when you when you um, when you ride onto it, when it appears on a Vanguard Circle, you may Soul Blast 5, I think. Let me check. I need, again, I need, I need, um, 
I need more education about Royal Paladin. Anyway, so plus five, yes. And if you do choose up to three of your re uh, rear guards and they get plus five can't do another turn. So this is a pretty much a uh, watered down version and Soul Saver is not restricted to just front row or back row. Whereas the Dark Dictator, uh, he's you know he's restricted to just front rows, um, front row front row rear guards with uh, who are Shadow Paladins. So anyway, back to back to why the skill um, uh, most of the skills are similar to King of Knights. Well, <clears throat> it is said that the Dark Dictator is Alfred's shadow but brought to life by Phantom Blaster Dragon, uh, known as the King of Empty Shadows. Just as Alfred is a symbol to the Royal and maybe the Go Paladins, depending on which clan he's played in, uh, the Dark Dictator is an antithesis to that, and being an absolute existence that all Shadow Whip Paladins follow, um, other than Phantom Blaster Dragon himself. So he was created to kill Alfred himself, uh, rivaling Alfred's powers in terms of knowledge and swordsmanship. And he carries an immense hatred for Alfred despite his emotionless demeanor and empty gaze, and wants nothing more than to declare Alfred as a false king. Uh, having supreme rule over the lands of United Century with the Shadow Paladins in power is his sole purpose. Now there's really not much about the lore that can be said about the Dark Dictator, but there has been some word that the Dark Dictator is also known as Blasteed. <clears throat> Uh, who created the blaster armaments such as blaster blade, blaster dagger, blaster rapier, blaster axe and so on and so forth. Although that part needs to be reconfirmed so whether that's canon to the law or not is uncertain but let us know if you do know, alright? And the Dark Dictator first appeared in Volume 4 of the Kafai Venga manga by Ito Akira and is used by Ren in his fight against Kai in which he won. Uh, he also appeared in the side story manga which is The Shining Swordsman by Koshimitsu Makoto. But other than that, there really isn't, there hasn't been much review beyond what is already known. Now, this is the part where I talk about uh, a little about the experience of this unit, and this short paragraph is from the captain himself, uh, talking about fighting against the Dark Dictator. So thank you, Cap, for that. <clears throat> so in his own words, fighting against Dark Dictator back then with the boost of Shadow Paladins being that they were at the point it was played um, aggressively to benefit most of his Soul Blast skill. Uh, it's not a very common card to find back then so it's always a surprise to see it appear in front of you. Well, an extra 5k power is something normal in this day and age. Back then, uh, if you weren't prepared or didn't get lucky with your trigger checks, you may not survive the rush of two consecutive battle phases. Uh, well, End quote. <laughs> so thank you Cap for your input. Uh, personally, I have not fought against a Dark Dictator build myself, but knowing the game as it is right now, it is a threat from back then that may not have been carried forward so well. But until I actually fight one myself, uh, this is one thing I find hard to confirm, but will always intrigue me to this day. Um, but you know, if so if you know anyone who has, uh, who knows of or has the Dark Dictator build, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm, this is not a challenge by the way, I just want to know how it works and whether it works uh, in this current day and age with the current meta as it is right now. So um, yeah, do let me know. But until then, that is all for this week's card trivia of the day and let us know what card you'd like us to talk about next. Crossbow Radio Wave Bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Crossbone information. This is where we bring you news about upcoming releases, local events, and insights about Card Fight Vanguard and Crossbone Vanguards. G Character Booster 3, Rame Labyrinth Under the Moonlight, will be released in the Japanese format on March 3rd, Friday. This set includes further support for Pale Moon and Grand Blue, and there will be an exclusive rarity in this set called Rami Labyrinth Rare or RLR, or if you want to be fancy like me, Rami Labby Rare. <laughs> and it will contain the signatures of the voice actresses Kudo Haruka and Aimi, depending on which card you get. In the English format, G Character Booster 1 Try 3 Next will also be released on March 3rd Friday. This set contains further support for Gear Chronicle, Royal Paladin and Neo Nectar. Be sure to get this set and enhance your Vanguard experience. The anime Card Fight Vanguard G next as at Card Fight Vanguard's official YouTube channel every Sunday at 10 a.m. At the same time, tune in to Crossbone Vanguard's YouTube channel for a new Card Fight every Thursday at 6 p.m. as well as our weekly gaming live stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. That is all for Crossbone information. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. This marks the end of today's episode of Crossbone Radio Wave. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, well, as we move on to March, you know, here's hoping a better experience for us and for all of you guys as well. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, let's move on to the answer for what's that card. So if you guys are, have already guessed it, well, it's, it's, it's a card that is very familiar with all the old time players. But this card is Super Electromagnetic Life Form Storm. Woo! <laughs> that was a mouthful. Uh, his Japanese name is Cho Denji Seimeitai Storm. So he's a great tool with the inter uh, intercept ability and a 5k shield, 9k base power, 1 critical and is an alien. His vanguard or rearguard skill, uh, one and only skill, is when this unit attack hits a vanguard, if you have a nova grappler vanguard, choose a card from your damage zone and turn it face up. Or in other words, you can counter charge 1. So this is a very useful deck, a uh, very very useful card uh, and an alternate, a, bet, a very uh, pretty good alternative to um, Claydor mechanic. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, I have not seen a lot of people who play it because he doesn't really benefit much from restanding and attacking again, especially in a Victor deck. Unless you play like you know, unless unless <laughs> I don't know how to say, it, but uh, this this is only this is only so something only Cap and Ben will know because they are very very good um, Nova Grappler players and they are very well well versed in this. Um, in this aspect, but just as an observer myself and someone who has fought against a deck that uses Storm, uh, it's a very good uh, on hit pressure because you do not want your opponent to get a counter charge so he can use it again in his own in his turn or whatsoever. So it's a very good card. It's just that it's just that on his own his power is a bit weak unless you keep on standing him and adding power to him. But uh, with the new Victor, I'm not sure whether that's, if that's possible again. Then again, there are other better alternatives that have the rush ability and also you know it, it hits harder with a better uh, on-hit pressure like say Butagiru or Sever Temper or things like that. But anyway, this card is a is a Troll deck exclusive for um, for the Nova Grappler Troll deck so it's very hard to get your hands on it right now but if you get it then hey, uh, if, if you're building a, a budget Nova Grappler deck you can, you can consider putting him in there and see how where the card carries you, how far can it carry you to. <laughs> um, so next week we'll have not just one but two special guests. And they are the Captain and Leon. So they'll be joining me in a more phenomenal talk. So be sure to mark your calendars down and listen to us just fanboy and fanboy and fanboy. <laughs> Uh, well, just want to let you know also that we also accept fan mails and we'll be waiting for them. So if you have one, do send it to our email at crossbone.vanguards uh, crossbone at gmail.com. That's C-R-O-S-S-B-O-N-E dot V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D-S at gmail.com. Once again, that's C-R-O-S-S-B-O-N-E dot V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D-S at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions you'd like to ask us, feel free to send them in to us as well. And of course, you can also send them to us at our socials. We are on Twitter at CrossbombVGS, Facebook at CrossbombVanguards, and not to mention, follow us on our blog at CrossbombVanguards.com, where, where we post deck profiles, event coverages, and other things that we cannot post on our YouTube channel. Well, that, well, that, was, a, that was a mouthful. <laughs> And uh, well, hopefully March will bring a lot of better things for us, especially Rami Labyrinth. Please, please, uh, by the power of RNG, <laughs> please give me a Rami Labyrinth rare. <laughs> but we'll see on the day itself when we actually unbox it. So, well, with that said, thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you again in the next episode. Tang Endo, good night. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Cardfight Vanguard. This program has been brought to you by Crossbone Vanguards. Mm -hmm.